going on guys? Uh, this is Matt here, Leech Motorsports. Uh, this is a big video for me. Uh, this will be the first video ever I've done around Holly Terminator X systems for Fox Bodies. And uh, I actually, just for you guys, I've, I've bought one to put on my own car, not that I needed to. Uh, I was working just fine with, with a stock computer quarter horse deal, but uh, I figured for R&D purposes and, you know, probably to, to drive some more video content, I'd go ahead and slap it on my car. So you guys will see a lot of stuff about that in the future also once I, I get mine back up and running. But I'm going through some other changes right now, doing a tubular front end, completely redoing the hot side and the cold side of the turbo. We're going to go fender exit, uh, cutting some more weight out of the car, all kinds of crazy stuff. So you'll see more content about that later. But um, but anyways, this is going to be our first uh, Holly Terminator video. And uh, the, the topic here, this is, uh, you know, I'm working with a guy out in Texas named Jay. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of getting through some of the basics. We've got his fuel, you know, reasonably close in, in most areas. Uh, you know, we've, we've been through, uh, you know, the basics. And now we're starting to look at some of the drivability stuff. And one of his complaints right now, he said, well, um, you know, right now what happens is after I go through the gears and I let out of the throttle... It's not that the RPMs totally hang. I mean, they do eventually come down, but he said the RPMs will come down a little bit, and then they kind of hang at a certain point, and then it kind of pauses there, and then they come down. Uh, and he's, so, of course, he's saying, you know, why does it do that, and is there something going on? He's thinking, you know, maybe it's a, something related to a supercharger or his bypass valve or, you know, a million other things. I said, well, let me, let me take a look at it. And, uh, you know, it's in the tune. So what I've got on here... Um, this is uh, his data log. I've zoomed in on a very particular portion of this. Now, we don't see mile per hour in this log because the Terminator X kit out of the box isn't uh, hooking into a vehicle speed sensor. So uh, so right now, we're, we're going to just have to be able to do this with like looking at throttle position and uh, you know RPMs. Uh, but essentially, what we've got here is this, this line down here at the bottom, this uh, green line, this is his throttle position. So he's driving. Uh, and he's actually doing kind of a, an interesting pull for me just for some fueling purposes. Uh, he's way up at like 4,000 RPMs right now. I know that's not really normal driving, but um, that I wanted to see kind of what, what the VEs were looking like up there. So anyways, he's cruising along. He's at about, you know, a little over 4,000 RPMs. And, you know, now he lets off the throttle. And so what we see is the RPMs start coming down, 35, 34, 33. And they, they work their way most of the way down. And then when they get right here, this, this red line is his RPMs. You see there's kind of a knee right here where they, they kind of hang up and it's not really dropping anymore very fast. And this happens, uh, in his case, this is around like 2,000 RPMs. It sort of hangs out here for a while and then eventually it continues to come on down. And, you know, and then he's idling. So the question is, why did it hang right here? And, uh, and it's in the tune. So... In this particular tune, um, we've got Jay's uh, target idle RPMs, uh, you know, at warm operating temperature set uh, about 740 or 750. Let's take a quick look there. Uh, yeah, so we've got him about 740 as his target idle RPMs. And what we're going to focus on today is this IAC ramp down area. Uh, so... What, what this means is that, you know, when, when you're actually in the throttle and, it, and you know, because you've done the TPS, um, TPS setting procedure, hopefully, on your car, uh, it understands what closed throttle looks like and what not closed throttle looks like. So what it's saying is anytime the throttle is open at all, doesn't have to be full throttle, just open at all, it's going to hold the idle air valve at a certain percentage of its duty cycle. And, and that's defined right here. So currently that's going to be 65%. And so, you know, what that means is that if you tip slightly in and out of the throttle, you know, while you're cruising or driving, there's a little bit of uh, airflow going through the valve to, to try to make that a little less, you know, bucky and, and jerky and, and, you know, keeps from doing weird shit like that. So, um, so 65% is where that's going to hold. And then the question is, so if I'm off the throttle and I, I'd like the RPMs to come down, well, if that duty cycle doesn't come down, my RPMs are not going to come down. It's all about that idle air valve. I mean, timing plays a little bit of an effect, but the idle air valve is the most important thing. So if that if that idle air duty cycle doesn't at some point ramp down, the RPMs hang. So back to the log for a second. This blue line across the top is the idle air duty cycle. So again, going back to here, uh, you can see it's at that 65%. 
which we specified as its hold position, because he is still in the throttle. But the question is, well, he's out of the throttle. By here, he's down at 2%, and right there, we're at 1%. So it's basically closed throttle, but you see that the idle air valve duty cycle still is 65%, and it's hanging there. And so what happens is, even when you're closed throttle, until your RPMs have dropped low enough to get to a certain point and then continue down, it's just going to hold that. And that's determined right here by this RPM above idle to start ramp. So remember, if we're set at 740 as the target idle speed, 1100 above that would be 1840. So what this means is that when he's in the throttle, it's going to hold that idle air at 65% duty cycle until he lets off the throttle and it comes back down and it's at least under 1840. So let's go look at the log here. So looking at the RPMs, 2200, 2100, 2000, 1900, and then right in here, this is where the idle air valve duty cycle starts to drop down like it needs to. And you notice it's on the money, it's at 1840. And at that point, it's, it now says, okay, now we can go ahead and, and start bringing that down. And then there's a period of time that determines how fast do we want that idle air valve to taper down. Because if it, if it tapers too slow, even though the RPMs are you know, still going to come down slowly, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to be slow, and you're going to be like, yeah, I'd really like the RPMs to come down faster. And if you make that happen too fast, then your car stalls or... Or maybe if it doesn't stall, it swings really low, and then the you know the uh, closed loop speed control has to kind of even things back out. So it, it's still not quite the experience you want. So once we get down to this 1840, what, how steep is this curve right here as it works its way down to idle? Well, that's going to be controlled right here with this ramp decay time. So it's saying it's going to take 3.2 seconds uh, to to fully bleed down all of that uh, duty cycle until it you know hopefully isn't needed anymore. So if once you get to this point you'd like that to happen faster, then you need to reduce your ramp decay time. So if you said, you know, cut it about in half, you put it at 1.6 seconds, uh, you know, it'd be a much shorter window of time for that to come all the way out. So the, the result is the RPMs would drop that much faster. Uh, and then the final component here is, so okay, now the idle air is dropping. And of course, now we can start to see the RPM start to respond and they're dropping also. And then the final component here is at what point does the car now go into normal idle control mode? Uh, where it's, you know, fluctuating timing and fluctuating that idle air duty cycle uh, to maintain whatever your desired target is. And so what you see here is you notice that the duty cycle drops at a very steady rate. And then right when we get to here, it skyrockets back up some of the way, and then it starts to kind of, you know, jitter around and, and, you know, move. And you can see the same thing with the ignition timing, that the timing's kind of rolling down based on what we've done with the VE table. It gets right here, and then there's kind of this jagged spike, and then it starts to fluctuate. So this point right here, this is when the car entered idle speed control mode. And it's, it's now realizing that in order to maintain speed, we have to adjust idle air and uh, timing. So... I'm not happy with this though, because if this is a really, really silky smooth transition, it shouldn't come all the way down and then have to make such an abrupt change to catch itself. If it does, if you see that jagged change with both your timing and your idle air valve, uh, they're generally going to go up or down in a jagged manner, you know, but they're going to be kind of similar. They're, they're both trying to compensate for the same problem, either over speed or under speed, so they're both going to react in a similar way. Uh, at least at first. So so that's another thing to watch out for. If that's happening, then what that means is uh, you've, you've dropped out this airflow too quick or too slow, or you have the RPM point where uh, it's allowed to enter this special idle mode again. Uh, you've got that off, so you're making it wait too long or uh, not long enough, and then you can have those issues. So we're going to start right here. Jay's actual complaint is I let off the throttle and my RPMs don't really come down all the way very fast and that's through this area right here. So there's a couple ways that we could attempt to resolve that. We could lower the uh, IAC hold position so it's not even hanging as high as 65%. Uh, maybe we can make it hang at 60% or 50% or 40%. Um, that would be one way that might solve the problem. Uh, we could tell it to uh, ramp 
that that uh, idle air valve down faster, uh, which would kind of resolve part of the problem. Or we can change this RPM point right here, this 1100 number, um, so that it's able to even at higher RPM. So if he really is driving up at you know 3000 or 3500 RPMs or something, it doesn't have to get all the way down to that 1840 before it's going to start you know really ramping the thing down. So uh, what I would do in this case is I'm going to leave this at 65 percent. I don't I don't want to mess with that. But what I do want to happen uh, is I want this uh, to be able to start ramping down sooner. I don't want to wait till the RPMs have dropped all the way down to 1840 before it it allows this to, to ramp down because ultimately you can see that at the 65 percent duty cycle that's going to kind of hold it right around 18 to 2,000 RPMs, at least with the way this tune uh, or this this combination is responding right now. So what I'd like to see is that it, it's allowed to start ramping down from, you know, maybe 27 or 2,800 RPMs. Uh, so what we're going to do here is let's do 2,700. Well, let's let's do baby steps, kind of baby steps. Let's do 2,500 and see how it responds. So we'll do 2,500. Um, but what we have to factor in also is the 740 idle. So I'm going to subtract 740, and we know that uh, 2,500 RPMs would be 1,760 above uh, above idle. So 1,760 is what we need to put it put in there. And then that means that you know way sooner going back to the log. Now at 2,500 RPMs, which is all the way around here. Now this blue line is going to start to drop all the way down here. If it drops at the same pace, just kind of looking at the shape of the line, you know, it looks like things should start to even out about where they need to. So, you know, without changing too many things at once, which is always something I, you know, want to encourage people not to do when they're experimenting, you know, try changing one thing, see how you like it, see how it responds, look at the data, you know, and then make another minor adjustment. So without changing too much, I want to start with just the one change. But I think what we'll also probably end up doing is revisiting uh, this ramp decay time and bringing this number uh, down so that drop occurs a little bit faster. And once we've done that and we feel like the RPMs are dropping at a rate that's reasonable, then we will reassess what this part looks like when we get here as to when it's going to go ahead and kick back into idle control mode so that we don't have such a sharp uh, spike here where it has to overcompensate for something we can smooth that out but we've got to get this this initial drop occurring uh, in a more acceptable way first to get the rpms down uh, so I thought this was a you know a decent topic for a first video and and there's some other uh, videos that I'll follow here that there's actually some procedures, and I think some of this is even in the Holly manual, but there's some procedures you can follow to really figure out how to dial in this idle air by changing your target idle RPM to something really high, figuring out what duty cycle you need to be at uh, on your idle air valve to maintain that, and then you kind of work backwards from those numbers. So there's a little bit more of a scientific way to do this. We'll cover it in another video soon, but, uh, but this was just on my mind right now because I was working with somebody, and I I had a good looking log on the screen that really showed the issue quite well, so I wanted to bring it up. So, uh, look forward to more Holly Terminator X stuff. Good luck. Godspeed.